Okay, let's start with, since this is a hybrid group of people, let me just make sure na walang mag-isa. Please partner up with somebody. We'll begin with a pair work. And this will be serving two purposes. Kaya okay, sabi ko upo sa harapan para lahat tayo magkakatabi. First purpose is so that um, we break the ice, but second purpose is that so we can loosen up a bit. So we, we can loosen up a bit because don't worry, walang workshop part yung ating training today. But so that we can also, you know, get to know people, get to be reminded of why we're even here, to get a diagnostic of what a facilitator is in the first place. So pick a partner. Okay, meron na? Okay, we all naman understand the same language, Filipino or English or Chinese, if ever you're a Chinese. Okay, so there. <clears throat> so pick a partner and for the next four minutes, I want you to discuss. I want you to discuss and I know you're veterans of this, I know you're very good at this, but sometimes it's good to be brought down ano, to square one and just be reminded of how fun this is. So, ito po ang gagawin ng pairs. The title of the, well, the objective is, and the principle is, we do this because we want to be reminded that we are called to sustain edifying conversations. Okay, a purpose as facilitators, and you will learn more about this later, is so that we may sustain, of course, with the help of the Spirit, edifying conversations. Not edifying for our sake, but of course, so that people may be led to the Lord. But let's start with a very trivial thing. Okay, so we have here topics that you will discuss for the next four minutes. Take two minutes po yan. Two minutes will be spent talking about item A and two minutes will be spent talking about item B. Now, you're a pair. You're a tandem. So one of you will be letter A or will share about letter A and the other person will share about letter B. Meantime, yung the other one will facilitate letter A and the other one will facilitate letter B. So right now, kindly pick the person who wants to answer or facilitate item A. Okay, sino gusto mag-facilitate for item A. May katabi naman po, na may partner na. Sige. Okay. Hmm. Okay. By default, magpa-swap lang kayo ng roles for item B. So, kung sino yung nagtanong sa item A, you will now answer and have the benefit of sharing and sharing and sharing an item B. Now, this is about sustaining, alright? So, we have two minutes. What we notice is if we do these icebreakers, some of the pairs, after 30 seconds, they're done talking. Oh, really? You've talked about why next week will be a good week in 30 seconds? That's all you can say? Now, the facilitator must be, I don't know, satisfied or not doing his part as person drawing out answers. So, the time limit is two minutes. Sustain a conversation for two minutes. And this will be a diagnostic because this will really test how appropriately and how logically and how well you draw answers using questions. Personal questions. Questions you just came up with right now. Okay? So, for the first Two minutes, item A mo na ang pag-uusapan ng dalawa. May isang nagtatanong, nag interview Yung isa, kwento na ng kwento. Ngayon, kung magaling magkwento yung partner nyo, solve na kayo, di ba? Tapos na yung two minutes. All right? All right. But in case it's not, and I have not said stop, keep it going. Okay? And then you will realize, and the lesson behind this is that you're having fun, you're learning about each other, and most importantly, you know, you're encouraging each other. One of the primary purposes why we have small groups in the first place. So ready? Ready? Face your partner and don't even talk. No, 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 don't even talk yet. Just face your partner. And I want you to think of your partner as your brother or sister. Okay? Look at them in the eye. Look at them in the eye. Ayan na. Good. Thank you for everybody who are participating. Look them in the eye and treat them as your kapatid, your brother or sister. Have a new look of them. And I think this will greatly affect the way you will converse. You have a new mindset about the person you're talking to. You certainly will be encouraged to enjoy a conversation with them. So, kapatid nyo na sila, ha? Unless kung kaaway nyo yung kapatid nyo. Okay? Think of somebody else that you really love, you really care about, and you have a great relationship with. Okay? Not a three-month fling, but a lifetime relationship with. Okay? In our workplace, wherever the Lord has planted us to begin with. Okay? Encounter one does not start on Friday. It starts, actually, already started. The moment you heard about it, the moment the Lord planted in your heart a desire to be there to facilitate, it already started. The preparation work already began. And now we are building momentum in that stage of preparation so that we can come up with the best of the best that we can have on Friday and Saturday. Let's take a look at Hebrews 10.25. All together, let's read this. Go.
Okay, I think our purpose is very clearly stated here as a group. It's very clearly stated why or the, what the Lord is commanding us. Interestingly, it's only in this verse in Matthew 24, 31 that that Greek word is used to signify us being together in a sense and waiting upon the Lord. And let us not neglect our meeting together. That is why we are gathered. That is the mindset you have as you prepare. It is a simple faithfulness to the Lord's call to fellowship. And this kind of fellowship is not a friendly, buddy-buddy kind of uh, fellowship. This is a fellowship of Christ-like followers of brothers and sisters in Christ. Kaya nga po sinabi ko kanina, tignan yung katabi ninyo, have a new view of who they are. They are your brothers and sisters in Christ. Kahit po nagigitang kayo sa parking kanina, they're still your brothers and sisters in Christ. No matter what they have done to you, or maybe they're strangers to you in the past, in the present, now that you are in Christ, have a renewed look of your brethren and of course, especially those you will disciple, the Lord has entrusted to you to disciple. Okay, this is basically the point of this verse. As you prepare, have a mindset. A mindset of just faithful obedience to the Lord. And out of this obedience, what? We fellowship. And in that fellowship, this verse says, we encourage one another. Especially now, the day of His return is drawing near. Now for the Jews in this verse, that's what it will actually start already with the destruction of the temple. But in this particular context... Encourage one another is expressed in two ways. And how do we encourage each other? Again, part of your mindset. First is that we love each other. You like being loved? Do you feel loved today? Yes, you do. So extend that. Second is that we do it through good works. The encourage word there means to love and to do good works. That is how we express encouragement. So as you prepare, bear in mind, as we go to, before we go to the specifics and tips, have this mindset, have this heart set. That you're being faithful to what the Lord has told you to do. This is your new life in Christ. And as such, you're called to gather. You are the church. And as such, you're called to encourage each other. And that is expressed in loving and doing good works to one another. Especially that the day of the, of the Lord's return is near. And of course, we excitedly look to do that. It involves planning. <clears throat> planning. Of course, planning has already been started. We already have a plan. The plan is to be here on Friday. The plan is to be here on Saturday. The plan is to facilitate. Okay, but part of the planning, I will emphasize, is letter B. It involves preparation. Uh, I think these are synonymous, planning and preparation. But now that we have a blueprint, we have a GLC-1 program, and at the end of GLC-1, or for some, the beginning of GLC-1, it's Encounter-1, that's our plan, to be there. But part of that, especially as facilitators, with our mindset and heart set in Hebrews, is to prepare. Okay? It's not enough to have an agreement that, yeah, I should be doing this. Yes, the Lord wants to do this, me to do this. It's also part for us to partner with the Lord and do our part. That means part done. So how do we prepare? Four things. Know your material, know your people, know your venue, know your Lord. What is our material? Di ko pala, huh? Of course, we base it on the Bible, but for this specific event, the biblical truths is expressed where? We have, of course, a design for Encounter 1. You're already seeing parts of it in part 2, right? So that's your material. Okay? Of course, biblical truth, we arrange it in a sequential order so that it becomes evangelistic okay? in, a way, in a sense that people will, again, know or in some cases reconnect with Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. But of course, we have a booklet for that, which you will see on Friday, parts of which for your, for your sakes, because you need to prepare, it's already here. So know this. Know the material for Encounter 1. First, know where it is in the entire big picture. Why do we have Encounter 1 in the first place? Okay. Some people consider Encounter 1, especially pastoral areas, as a bridging event. It allows seekers to come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, surrounded by the beautiful trees and hummingbirds in MMRC. But in our case, Chances are, most of those attending on Friday and Saturday have gone through book one, right? And most likely, and we pray, they have already have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and have a basic knowledge of, about their faith. So the particular use of True Life Encounter 1 in our version is so that we can have a refresher, a reminder, a great, great reminder, especially now that you are progressing towards graduation and Lord willing GLC 2 which is, of course, about the doctrines of our faith and spiritual growth. So this is like a pause in our six-month program so that people are reminded and refreshed. Now, if for some of them, if this means really encountering Jesus for the first time, praise God. We will not blame them for not listening to you for the past six months. Okay? We will just praise the Lord for that. But for the most of us, our hope, our prayer is that this will serve as a great reminder. 
Besides, it's also a great explanation or re-explanation for us. Okay, if you think your book one sessions medyo bitin, we have the, the privilege now of teachers, again, guiding us through the particulars of our faith, of our basic doctrine of salvation. So know your material. Second part is, aside from seeing it in the big picture, know the sessions. The sessions are logically, sequentially ordered so that people get to hear about, and we'll go through this later, God's love. Where do we stand in the face of a holy and mighty God? Second session, what is our problem then? What is the separating element between us and this holy and mighty and loving God? Third is, of course, the Lord's answer, the cross. Fourth is, um, of course, this is not in sequence, but uh, deliverance from bondages, from things that, that chain us down. The next session will be about living a victorious life in the Spirit. And of course, the last one will be envision. How should you now live your life that you are in Christ? And the last one, the seventh actually, is more of an expression. It's baptism. Anyhow, know the sessions. Know why they are arranged that way. Of course, we can switch, switch them, of course. But know what their content is about. Know the objective. Know the questions that will bring out that objective. You can know especially why they're there. You should be the very first people to believe in what you're doing. So believe in each session. Believe in the purpose of each session. Believe in the heart of each session. And I'm pretty sure your disciples or those you will facilitate will follow after you. Know your material. Second, know your people. Know your people. And for most of you, you know your people, right? But for some of you, you will be assigned new people. Of course, discipleship management will, in their best effort, order us on Friday and Saturday into breakout groups. Some groups wanted to meet as a complete group. They registered as a complete group. They indicated they want to be together. So most likely, the leader of those groups have six months or three months or some healthy amount of time background about their members. So somehow they have a relationship with them. But for those of you who are going alone, you will be assigned people who are also going alone. And they will be forming homogeneous groups, singles, single ladies, single gentlemen, and couples, primarily. So you will be meeting them for the first time. Some of them came from Wednesday, some from Sunday. The benefit is, most likely, you're all going through GLC1. So you speak the same language, you come from the same background. So in terms of knowing your people, I think we're pretty much set. You have an idea of who to expect to be there. Yeah, but when we say know your people, this also means your response to them, right? So your response to them, as we did say a while ago, is to encourage them. Through what? You love them, you serve them through your good deeds, as Hebrews would say. So know them and respond to them. Be the very first one to invest in them. Be interested in them. Of course, you know the works. You know the works. So know your people. Know your venue. Our venue is the multipurpose hall. Consider that as part of your preparation. Anticipate the size. Anticipate small details that will make it more conducive or less conducive to your discussions. This will be a morning to an afternoon. So do consider what happens to people at various points of the day. Do consider this is starting on a Friday and most of our attendees are working. So some of them might be busy with their cell phones once in a while, which we, by the way, discourage. Do also consider that this is December. And what happens in our mindsets during December? We are in a panic state. We are in a restless state. So this is actually encounter one is a very busy, a very good answer, an antidote to our December blues. November, December, we're all rushing, we're all panicking to meet deadlines, to get the Christmas bonus, to give a great uh, gift to our children, okay, to have organize a great Christmas party, and then encounter one happens. So know your venue and know everything that will transpire in that environment. Part of knowing your people, part of knowing your material, they will all come together in great fusion in your venue. So the multipurpose hall is your venue. That is where we will have our discussions. Do consider the small details, the air conditioning, the lighting. Most importantly, the kind of mood we want to establish. Do we want to establish an elevate mood? We're all jumping together and raising our hands and doing tumbling, jumping jacks? No, this is encounter one. Okay, this is not a concert. Okay, this is not... This is not even a, a serious one person to everybody Bible study. This is a small group discussion and a small group setup. So know your venue. But most importantly, know your Lord. And I think this anchors the entire preparation discussion. Know your Lord. Know your Lord. Timothy Keller has this great video uploaded to GLC Facebook page that I want you to check out. If, you're, if you'd liked the GLC page, 
do scroll down and you'll see there's several excerpts of GLC classes, for example, Pastor Bong doing Galatians. And then you'll see down there a video of Timothy Keller. And it, this is a great diagnostic video. He, uh, he has three basic questions for everybody. It's a self-diagnostic that will make you believe or make you reflect at least if you know your Lord. Questions like, if you know your Lord, does the Word of God ring true to you? Is it transforming you this week? Questions like, and I forget, forgive me, okay, how alive is the work of the Spirit in you? Are you? Do you appreciate God's Word today more than yesterday? Okay. Check the video out. Basically, know your Lord is that you have a relationship with Him. You don't suddenly have a relationship because you now have a position of leadership as a small group leader. You've had it since you accepted Him as Lord and Savior. Are you paying attention to that? Are we consciously nurturing that? Because that will spill over over the preparation stage and into the very discussions we're having on Friday and Saturday. They will see that in action. So if you're feeling right now, you feel hollow, you feel disconnected, you feel troubled and you feel restless, my advice is simply to go down in prayer and confess to the Lord, Lord, speak to Him in a very conversant manner. Hey, Panginoon, I am not enough. Ako po ay may mga pagkukulang. Ako po ay may mga pagdudud at alinlangan. Lord, just help me. Meron po ako napakalaking responsibilidad, napakalaking panawagan ngayong bernes. And Lord, I'm not going to prove myself worthy to you. You have done that. You're the one doing that. I just want to trust you, Lord. So know your Lord. And part of knowing your Lord is that you're, you can never be perfectly um, all right with the Lord on your own terms. Do it on His terms, in prayer, in full submission. If you've cut off your spiritual discipline of reading your Bible, maybe it's a good week to start picking it up. Again, so that you don't be ritualistic about it. No, this is not about rituals and getting yourself right with the Lord. You cannot do that. Okay. It's just setting ourselves apart, taking ourselves apart from where we are right now and just realizing that simple fact that He is Lord and Savior. We do this for Him. And if anything nice will happen on Friday and Saturday, it's because of Him, not us. As I always say, it's a DNA. You know, facilitators, it's not about you. It's not about how prepared you are. Okay? Ironically, we will end this section on preparation with this statement. You can never be fully prepared, but only the Lord will qualify you. And for in the eyes of some, you might be ill-prepared, but for those who are listening to you, the disciples who will share their stories with you, you are more than enough because the Lord made you so. You will be more than enough because of that. Do you trust the Lord will prepare you? Okay. This is, okay, know your material, know your people, know your venue, sure. But know your Lord. Connect, reconnect, and just be in His presence. And that has begun a long time ago. Okay. Let's be reminded of that. And let's be assured in that. Second, the, uh, well, Proverbs 21.5 says in the NASB, let's read all together this great reminder. Go. There's a Greek proverb that, proverb that says, To him who labors, all good things accrue. The man who labors, God himself assists. Let me repeat that Greek proverb. To him who labors, all good things accrue. All good things come. The man who labors, God himself assists. God himself assists. So partner with the Lord. Dito lang po ang sinasabi nito. Partner with the Lord, do your part. And we have established those no's a while ago. It starts with knowing your Lord. Second, now that you're prepared, let's examine first and foremost how you will act and respond on Friday and Saturday. 1 Corinthians 14, 26, and let's live, uh, let's live, let's read this living word all together. Go. Each of you has a hymn, a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. Let's start, let's work backwards. Why do we do this? What are we building up? Ourselves? Are we trying to feel good? No. What are we building up according to this verse? The church. And who is the church? And who is our head? Christ. It's all about Him, guys. It's all about Him. The reason you are your facilitating and the kind of attitude you will have as a facilitator and the role you will play as a facilitator is somehow summarized in this one. And what is this image showing us? Okay, this is not a verse that directly suggests facilitation. No. But it gives us a glimpse of what's happening in church gatherings. The fellowship we talked about in Hebrews a while back. What is happening here? They are coming together 
And what does everyone bring? What do they bring? Everyone has a, a hymn. Everyone has a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Of course, we're not going to discuss about the tongue part. Okay? That's a different discussion. But what I'm saying is, everybody has a role to play on Friday and Saturday. Everybody has a role on Friday and Saturday. And each of them will bring something. Let's focus on the kind of stories they will share. Let's focus on the kind of truths we will impart. Okay? This, this interaction will take place on Friday. The point of this verse is, is pretty much simple. In all this religious exercise, we have to be two things. We have to be intentional about this, meaning as facilitators, let's celebrate this happening on Friday and Saturday. Okay? And secondly, let's try to mean it. Okay? It should come out of the outflow of our faith in the Lord. So as we meet on Friday and Saturday, everybody has a role, everybody has a story to share, but most importantly, we all have a truth to rally around with. Okay? And your role is what? Facilitator. You are the facilitator. In this picture, in this discussion, you are a facilitator. Let's assume that's a small group. You're a facilitator, and chances are these things will come out. But of course, at the end of the day, let's zoom in. We do this to build up the church, not so that we can have fun conversations, not because so that we just want to obey Pastor Ricky in what he says. We do this because it benefits the body of Christ. Distinguishing between teaching and facilitating Facilitators are oftentimes compared ka pinagtatabi kadalasan ng facilitator at teacher dahil po ito po ang kadalasang loophole, oh sorry, ito po ang kadalasang default ng mga leaders. This is the default mode of leaders. And we like that in the sense that it's your also, it's part of your role to teach. Okay, but for in the small group context, we also want to teach through facilitating. That's an interesting concept. You teach people through facilitation. And what is facilitation anyway? It's asking questions to draw out answers. It's asking questions to draw out answers. So yes, we are called to teach. But in the setup of a small group where we're called to gather in fellowship and exchange ideas, to bring together everything in 1 Corinthians, let's facilitate. And it's also for sometimes, uh, sometimes, not saying every time, mas marami pa silang baon during the small group than the entire lecture of the teacher. Sometimes. They're complementary. That's why we have a BSG setup outside. Okay, but what I'm saying is that there are also good things happening in a small group discussion. So let's facilitate. Let's distinguish lang, uh, again, a review of DNA session uh, 6. Teacher-centered on teaching, obviously, but your focus on Friday and Saturday is the participant. Okay, the participant. And what is our concern? That we ask them questions and that we draw out answers. And of course, we leave them to the truth, not our truth but the truth in God's Word. And our pastors will give their due diligence and show you that on Friday and Saturday. We just have to point them there. We just have to point them there. Matter of fact, we already helped you with the questions part. The questions are already here. And you just have to prepare for that. So it's not about you teaching. The pastors will give them that. They will give them the unadulterated, no plus, no minus, is Word of God and God's will for their lives. But we will reinforce that by facilitating. In our breakout discussions, we will focus on them. We will see how they appreciate it. We will see where they're coming from and how they process things. So in a sense, you're also teaching, but you're doing it by facilitating. Let them give them their answers. Let them give you their, their thoughts, their feeling, their experiences, and process that. And then they will come home enriched. The truth of the word has become alive. The truth of the word has been processed. The truth of the word now dwells in them. And we reinforce that. The teacher provides most of the ideas. That's what the pastors will do during the plenary. But your role during breakout is to simply draw out supporting ideas from the participants. We're all going to talk about the same principles on Friday and Saturday. See, we don't have to debate on Friday and Saturday. But we will just, again, reinforce that by drawing what they think and what they believe about what they've heard. And of course, again, we will guide them through their sharing, through their stories, through their experiences, through their insights, and point them to Christ. Point them to the truth. Okay, do not end your conversations with, okay, tayo. Always close, not only in prayer, but close with a statement or two that directs them back to the truth. 
because maybe they did not say the entire their entire take on something. Okay, maybe they're just holding back, and maybe parts of their they're maybe in their minds may debate na kayo. Ano, ano, sinabi ng pastor ganito hindi ko maintindihan. So they're holding back. Okay, but our role is to reinforce. So don't leave them conflicted. Point them back to the truth at the end of the conversation. Kasi minsan po nangyayari, no? Okay, uh, again, sometimes because time extends, natatapos yung discussion, nag-sharing lang tayong lahat, tapos lunch time na. Okay, sometimes we, clo- we, we lose the closing. And sometimes there, there is where we lose them in the process. The closing is basically, you process it, okay, you unite us again, and point us to the truth. The truth does not change. And our truth on Friday and Saturday will not change. And that's a benefit to you. You don't have to keep proving yourself right. Third, teachers do most of the talking, like what I'm doing right now, but on Friday, we will let them do the talking. Just like your icebreaker activity a while ago, you threw in great questions, they threw it lengthy, meaningful answers. They do most of the talking, you just keep the discussion alive. And again, we have addressed that because we now have a set of questions we have revealed to you to guide you. It's like your own talking points. So you don't have to come up with unique questions and follow-ups. We're all pretty much going to talk about the same thing on Friday and Saturday. And that's great because when you exit for break time, we can all talk about the same thing and further reinforcement happens. Next, <clears throat> teacher is the subject matter expert. Again, that will be the role of our pastors on Friday and Saturday. That's what you call, sorry, teaching. But facilitators, you do the process. You're the process expert. The subject matter, the topic has been handed down. It has been planted in their hearts. Now you just have to process it. Okay, so what does this mean to you? So how will you apply this in your life? And of course, we have a set of questions already which we will follow. That's the process already. The set of questions is already how we will process them. You just have to enjoy, take your seat, lean back, and enjoy the process at work. The truth has already been planted. Now just process it. Allow it to take deeper root. Allow it to be real to them in their experience and applicable in their lives. You're the facilitation expert. You're the quiz master. They already have their stack knowledge. It has taken root. You just have to remind them. You just have to process them. And again, you just have to point them back to that which they believe. Lastly, the teacher is more concerned with effectiveness of delivery and content. You don't even have to rehearse in front of a mirror on Friday. Your role is simply that you manage discussions and, of course, learning. Managing discussions, you throw in very good questions. You keep the discussion going on using follow-up questions if need be. But here's interesting. Management of learning. How do you manage their learning? How do you manage that? And we've been stressing that since the beginning of this chart. You point them back to the truth. You point them back. And that is why we also included the objective of each session. Because that will be the central theme of each session. So if there's any goal in your mind, in your subconscious going on, those are the objectives. Okay. So again, be a facilitator. Don't be a teacher. There will be time for that. But on Friday and Saturday, please be the best facilitator you can be. And how is that? Colossians 3.16 Let's read this from the NIV. Go. All right. Okay. I ling lang po nito. This is a very beautiful picture again of the church. Again, let's work backwards. Singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. You do that on Sundays, don't you? Some of you, you really have to raise your hands. You really have to hit. Iba sa yung nagiging automatic soprano pag Friday. Kasi you really just are led by the Spirit to just bring it out. And we won't hold you back from that. We won't hold you back from that. But our focus here is this. Let the message of Christ dwell among you. You are somehow the messenger on Friday and Saturday alongside our pastors. You hold the monopoly of the truth in so to speak. Okay? Because you're prepared for it. You somehow know where this is going. But this is not what this verse is all about. Your role on Friday is to model the gospel to them. Okay, let me just repeat that. The role of your facilitating on Friday is to model the gospel to them. When it says, let the message of Christ dwell among you, dwell, inhabit you. Take over every single aspect of you. 
in a sense, it is real in you and your authenticity will show. Your role is simply, and let me just summarize before I go to the details, ating pong gagampanan sa Bernes at Sabado po ay maging mabuting halimbawa lang po ng gospel, ng ebanghelyo ng Panginoon. Can you do that? You've been doing that. Praise God. Okay, we just have to be reminded, no? this is what this session is all about. Okay, let the word of Christ, let the gospel message of Christ dwell in you. That is in summa, the role of the facilitator and as any discipler, actually, to model Christ-likeness, to model the reality of the gospel truth. So that, so that po, with the work of the Spirit, we may see these things happening. You are the model of the gospel. They will hear about the gospel. The gospel in its power and self-sufficiency will transform them. But you will reinforce that one yet again with your modeling on Friday and Saturday. Sapat po ang ibanghelyo para magbago ng buhay. Hindi po natin trabaho po yun. E ngunit sa pamamagitan po ng ating halimbawa, e lalo po nila may kita na buhay po ang ibanghelyo. Buhay po ang gospel message. Papano? Okay? Through our facilitation. Sa ating pong gagawin. A facilitator is simply another member. So who are you? What's your identity on Friday? You're just another member of the group. Ito po maganda. None of us, or maybe most of us do not have seminary backgrounds. Maybe some of you have. Praise God. Okay, but we're just another member of the group. No one higher, no one lower. You're not qualified because Pastor Peter interviewed you today. You are qualified because the Lord called you to be his disciple and part of that is discipling. It's him who qualifies you. In a sense, kung kumpanya tayo, it's who you know. So who do you know? Jesus Christ. And that is all you need to know. You are just another member and you're qualified to lead that group as a facilitator. And you're what? Helping them discuss. Through what? Your questions and your processing. So that what? They may be reinforced. So that they may be pointed back to the Christ truth. He looks for opinions, not answers. We're so good at giving answers, aren't we? We're so well versed. I know a lot of you will beat me in memory verses kasi mahina po ako sa mga bagay. But here it says, you're not to supply them answers, you're here to draw opinions. It's important you draw opinions. Because if everybody said the same thing about the same verse, we have, we have a problem. We're robotic that way. Hindi po tayo lagi magkakasundo sa isang pagbasa ng verse. Lalo na po ng isang prinsipyo. So, it's important for you to draw that out through your questions, through these fielded questions. These opinions now will inform you on how to process them and at the end of the discussion, point them back. Point them back. Okay, of course, may mga opinions na medyo hindi nakakatulong or not expected or not edifying. We will address that later. So you look for opinions through your questions. Do not, and the temptation is always there, dictate answers to them. Again, we will teach through Facilitation. Simply, what does point B mean? It simply means you explain the guidelines and this can be done in one or two sentences. Okay? The host will do his job and tell them, but nga ba tayo may breakout? But when you start, you have the entire stage, meaning you have the group to yourself. So what will you do to begin? You simply explain the guidelines. Nandito po tayo okay, para mag-share po ng atin pong mga kuro-kuro or what we think about the lesson today. At meron po akong mga tanong na gusto po natin sana sagutin. Wag po tayong mahiya. Kung meron po tayong opinion na gusto sabihin, sige po, sabihin po natin. Inang sa gayon tayo po ay makatulong sa isa't isa. Nang sa gayon po, lalo po nating maunawaan ang ating pong tinalakay. Explain the guidelines. Now, of course, another guideline that uh, medyo mahirap sabihin, of course, we encourage edifying language. Okay? Kung tayo po minsan ay may gustong sabihin at gagil na gagil tayo sabihin, Pilitin po natin sabihin ito sa paraan po na nakaka-bless naman po sa iba. Meaning, in a way that's edifying of each other. Okay? So we bind our language. Okay? And if we want an extended conversation because we really can't hold it back, make yourself available. Pwede niyo po kong kausapin habang nagpapansit tayo sa labas. Okay? Second, encourage the others to talk. Encourage the others to talk. Again, the, the loophole here is that there will be members who will be very, very tempted to talk. Wag po sana yung leader ang talk ng talk. 
Okay, you are encouraging others to talk. Again, we've, we've labored on this a while back through your questions. Okay, and be conscious of the time. If you look at the program, you only have 30 minutes per session for the breakout. And Lord willing, po, we stick to the time po with that. <clears throat> be an active listener. Okay, James 1.19, the principle there. What you hear verbally and what you hear non-verbally. We're so used po to the verbal communication po. Alam po natin kasi lumalabas po yan. What we mind you to be conscious about as you discuss, as you draw out opinions, is their non-verbal language. Ano po yung mga non-verbal language po? Ano po yung mga yun? Gestures or lack of gestures. Naging frozen na siya. Nakatingin na lang sa'yo. That means a lot. Let it go. Okay? Yan na yun. Kaya, kailangan mo na yun, let it go, Brad. Kasi, kayo na, 30 minutes na, bro. Baka naman may, any, any opinion on this? Okay, um, there. What you hear non-verbally. Again, we're so used to the verbal part. Okay, that's good. That's what you will process. But also process the non-verbal part. If you need to take the person aside after the 30 minutes, do so in love and in encouragement. Okay, kapatid, napansin ko that, you know, medyo tahimik ka sa discussion kanina, baka mas komportable kang i-share one-on-one. So sige, nandito ako ngayon para, sige, pag-usapan natin. Ano po ba ang tumanim sa'yo? Baka walang tumanim. Ito po kasi yung sinasabi niyan. Uh, sorry, fast word ko a bit, okay? But basically, you get the point. You sense it and let the Spirit lead you to those glances. Bawa, may natutulog sa likod. Di mga tipong ganun, okay? Those glances. Let the Spirit lead you to that. And you discern. And discernment only comes from the Spirit. So discern. Okay? Huwag niyong iwanan yung groupmate niyo na naiiwanan. Okay? Again, out of your love, out of your desire to love them and show good deeds to them, to encourage them, make yourself available. So be conscious of what happens and what is said verbally. That's their opinion. And be conscious of their non-verbal opinions. Kasi minsan, opinion mo expressed non-verbal. Pag nakakross yung ganun yung dalawang arms, that's, in psychology, that's a pretty strong statement. Alam na pag kung pikit ang mata. That's a great indictment of what's happening. Especially po pag, anong oras sa hapon, Brad? Alas stress ng hapon. Okay? At may snacks pala tayo, by the way. Kasama yun sa 3.50. Yay! Okay. Hindi <laughs> nyo alam yun. Huwag nyo gagawing selling point yun. Hindi <laughs> na siya sabi yan. Okay, so what you hear non-verbally. So again, product of our prep and our, the discernment of the Spirit. Letter C. He aims to, you aim to bring everyone into the discussion. Everyone. And again, as I said a while ago, no man left behind lang po tayo dito. Simple tagline. No one left behind. So if you're sensing verbally or non-verbally, a person is getting left behind, engage that person. You can, later we will emphasize this, you can stop the person who's been talking for 29 minutes and direct it. Huwag naman 29. 29 seconds. And direct that person or the discussion to the others. Because they have equal share in this one. And for some of us, yung tahimik pa talagang may pinagdadaanan. Hindi ba? Kaya nga siya tahimik eh. Because he had a bad day. Because he had a bad week. Kabalik tara na pinag-uusapan nyo kanina. And maybe, considered his silence as the spirit steering that person. So you just unlock that, open the door by focusing your attention. And in time, in those 30 minutes and beyond, minsan naman po, automatic naman po ang tugon eh. Pero minsan po hindi automatic ang tugon ng Holy Spirit po ano. Kung gusto nyo marinig, hindi nyo marinig sa 30 minutes. Okay lang po yun. Make yourself available. But at least you try to reach to that person. Hindi po natin pwedeng, we cannot expect or dictate the Spirit in 30 minutes. All of us will master living victoriously in Christ. Cannot. Cannot. Pastor Bong will do his due diligence and ay, ko na. take on that topic. Okay? But please, okay? But please, you can only go so far. So, Make sure they're involved. Throw your questions. Direct your attention to them. And make yourself available. Letter D. He is a learner. He doesn't force his own ideas. Pansinin nyo yung mga digop leader, na master na nila yung art of nodding. Oh. Iba-ibang nod. Ano? Oh, may masayang nod. Hmm, may suspicious nod. Oh. <laughs> You're like an investigator. You don't want to go to battle unprepared. You don't want to discuss a topic off tangent. You want to know as much from them. And then, then you will engage them. That's why you have questions. 
You teach through questions. So you ask the questions. If you need to, you do follow up. And from what wealth you will discover about them, engage. And what's the bottom line again? You point them back to the truth. Point them back. You don't force your own ideas. Especially pag medyo contradicting na yung doctrine yung dalawa. I mean, always remember this. Orientation and Welcome Wednesday and of course DNA class. Okay? Not our role to I mean, D word. De ba te. What kind of testimony is that? Diba? Nag-retreat tayo, nagsisigawan kayo sa table. Ano? It's, it's not a edifying conversation. It's a forceful conversation. And sometimes, it's leader promoted. Usually, we blame the person na medyo matigas ang ulo. But actually, let's look at our part. Have we done our part? Minsan, that is triggered because of you know, our disposition and our sounding self-righteous. Ako na ang pastor. Okay. You're just there to reinforce. And that's a great privilege, right? So don't force your own ideas. Be diplomatic about it. I'm not saying avoid the truth. Let this be said clearly. I am not saying iwasan ninyong pag-usapan yung totoo, yung absolute na din-discuss ng pastor. So what do you do about it? Just point them back to what the pastor said in a very diplomatic, loving way. And sometimes, pag medyo nakakainitan na, you have to put a stop to it. And then just re-engage them after the discussion. Because again, your table mates, your group mates will be looking at you and they have something to share. And then, you know, you're, pag nakita kayo nagaganunan na kayo, mag-hold back na yan. Because, you know, trust is an important currency in our trade. And they can't trust someone who is just bombarding them and being hard about it. We're supposed to be gentle, loving, and encouraging. How do we do that? How do we draw opinions specifically First is the strategy called open-ended questions. Again, review. Review lamang po ito. Ask why, what, what does that mean, and how? Why, what, what does that mean, how? Usually po, what is used as a closed-ended question. What verse? Who? Where? Okay, but we are asked to draw, ano classing what? Open-ended what? What did it say? Why did Jesus say that? Why did he say that I am the way, the truth, and the life? What kind of a man would say that? What does the verse say? What does it mean to you? And of course, ito po, nalilimutan pong question because of time management issues, you know, application. How does it apply? Again, we have to make the gospel real to them. You're the living gospel in the display to them. Show them that you will transcend yourself and let them apply. Application po. So after you may explain what, point to the truth. Why? Draw out their opinion. How? So what now? And then agree. Ah, yes, I agree with you. And in closing, in summary, remember po, the session message today, God's love, so forth and so on. In this verse, so on and so forth. Let's close in prayer. Ganon, ganon po. Close in prayer. Let's go. How does it apply? Okay, let's not forget that. So ask open-ended questions. And again, the benefit here is that the questions are already there. So I'm just saying this for your follow-up questions. Greater response questions. Greater response questions. And if to prove to you that this works, I asked three volunteers to demonstrate how this works. So medyo po dead air na po tayo sa conversations and we want them to really hammer on the essence of the truth. You open-ended po, medyo trivial yan. At medyo attack po niyan, practical. Ito pong greater response questions, kaya nga po greater, somehow draws them to the absolute truth, the heart of the issue. Kaya nga po, if you look at the strategies, describe, summarize, explain, it's all pointing down to the verses. And to show you how this works, I asked three people before this session began to demonstrate how this works. Okay, so let's assume we're a small group na medyo malaki. Okay, and let's demonstrate how this scribe works. For example, Describe man's unregenerate condition in Ephesians 2, 1, 3. Sounds difficult? I asked someone to say no to that. Who is the person? Ma'am, what is or describe our unregenerate state according to Ephesians 2, 1 to 3? How does describing work? Straight to the end. Uh, before we accepted Christ, we were disobedient and um, we were following the patterns of the world. So in, in the way we act, uh, the way we um, use our words. How about the hand? For being 
Hindi, hindi siya nakikinig buong session kasi nag-prepare there. <laughs> nag-prepare siya sa answer niya. Okay, she described our unregenerate state. Okay? Our nature. And I did not actually have those words. Actually didn't think of some of the words and some of the concepts na lababas sa kanya. She drew, I drew it out from her and she described alluding to the truth. Now, if there's something she said that doesn't agree with this verse, then you correct lovingly. Then you point back. But of course, I agree with what she said. So thank you, ma'am. That's how you describe. Ask them to describe. Okay. Ano ang condition ng tao sa kanyang fall? Ano ang pagiging Christ-like disciple? Okay. And that will be a very meaty answer. Again, pointing back to the truth. Summarize. Summarize simply means to, in a couple of statements, you're able to condense or shorten everything from A to Z into A, B, and C without losing the message or essence of A to Z. Okay, so summarize that. Summarize John 15. And who did I ask for that? Sir. Medyo tough, ano? Summarize an entire chapter from John. Okay. Sa wikang Tagalog. Tagalog, okay. Mas maganda. Si God po ang gardener, si Jesus Christ yung vine. Nagkaroon tayo ng relationship kay Christ nun tayo kumunekta sa kanya. Sini, uh, tinatanggal yung mga branches na hindi nakakunekta sa kanya kasi hindi lalago at yun yung sinusunog. Pagka tayo patuloy na nakakunekta sa kanya, lalago tayo, mamumunga tayo. Ang command ni God is uh, uh, giving love dun sa tao. Kaya pagdating dun sa, gen, sa chapter 16, sabi niya, I have chosen you to go and bear fruits the fruit that will last. Satisfied? <laughs> Ayos! Again, pointing back to John 15. Okay, kailangan ko yung check yung Bible ko, baka mas mahaba yung sagot mo daw. So he was able to summarize in a couple of statements, or uh, three to four statements, John 15. He shared his opinion about a summary. Hindi po niya pinaraphrase yung John 15. Sinequence po niya from start to finish yung John 15. He summarized John, uh, John 15. Okay, so iba pong summary sa paraphrase. Paraphrase po yung in your own understanding, in your own explanation, and maybe in your own terms. A summary po, sequential pa rin. So, love na love ni Pastor Joy ba itong bakal to? So what does the verse say again? Ano? Please summarize what the verse just said. Summary po. Pag sinabing paraphrase, in your own terms, in your own sequence, in your own words, of course, still referring to the same thing. But summary po is more organized. Okay, because nga po, from A to Z po siya, kinondenso lamang siya. Explain. Who can explain the relationship of the branches to the vine? Can you now explain the relationship of a Christian to Jesus? Anyone? Scripted to. Siya. Okay. Ma'am. What is, ayun na ni ma'am. What is your, ayun yun na. Ah, okay, sige. <laughs> no pressure kay Sir Ruben. Okay. So yun lang po, no? You ask, um, explain. Who can explain the relationship? So then someone po is looking at this particular angle. Explain. Usually explain po is using your own words na. Okay, in your own terms, in your own understanding. So again, different from summary po ito. Explain. Okay. And sometimes, explaining po has a personal dynamic. Can you explain the relationship of a Christian to Jesus? So yun po, just some suggestions. Actually, since the questions are already provided, these are more likely follow-up questions. Exploratory, I'll just go fast at this one. Exploratory, what else? What else does it say? Ano pa po bang may dadagdag natin? Especially kung hindi pa po lumalabas yung gusto natin palabasin. Redirection questions. What do you think? Ito na po yung nangyayari kapag medyo may medyo na po tayo may sobrang proactive member and we want to redirect from the word itself. So we now shift our attention. So thank you very much, Angel. So what do you say, Paula, about this? Okay, what can you say about this, Lemuel? And what do you feel in response to this verse? Okay, just to clarify that, what do you feel? Baka sabi niya, I'm happy. What do you feel in relation to this verse, Paula? <laughs> Feedback. A feedback, again, who can paraphrase our position or someone summarize what you've discussed. Uh, very much related to the earlier points. Lastly, he summarizes and asks for applications. Again, this is redundant already with what we've said a while ago. How do you ask people to summarize? You paraphrase or restate in their own words what you have said, what the verse said, what the pastor just said. Summarize. Important po ang summarize because as Ruben showed a while ago, it takes more attention to detail. Because you're going from A to Z. You're not Z, X, B, D, A. Okay, this is still from A to Z. 
Okay, in terms very much similar to the original, but you just condensed it. So summary po keeps everybody alert because everybody's paying attention to detail, they're alert. Okay, summarize. So maybe you can say that at the end of the discussion, we will summarize the session. Okay, and that will keep them awake, hopefully. Okay, because now they have to be very conscious of what was really talked about. And of course, our response, this KKK here is not really a strategy of summary. This is more of a response to opinions and explanations and paraphrasings that do not agree with our point. If that happens, and that will likely happen, of course, in our situation on Friday, Saturday, duman po ng book one, book two, Galatians, yung mga aaten. Likely, they will agree, and we will agree with what was discussed. But in case we don't, and provided you know what's right, by the way. Do the KKK. And alam you know, you're so good at this. KKK means? Okay. Do that to your teeth, Beto. Kick, kiss. No, sorry. Kiss, kick, and kiss. Kiss, kick, and kiss. Or the sandwich approach. Dati po tawag dyan sa in older CCF days. Sabi ni Jimmy Bernardo, sandwich approach. Okay. It kiss, kick, and kiss. Simply lamang po. Okay. Uh, engage them in love before you correct them with the truth. Actually, the kick will not hurt if it's, you're just saying the truth, right? And then kiss them again. Okay. Bro, I appreciate your answer. Let's look at the verse. This is what the verse says. So, what do you think does the verse say now? Very good. Here's a dog bone for you. Something like that. Okay. So, kiss, kick, and kiss. Engage with love. Kick with the truth because the truth is a proper kicking tool, by the way because it's really supposed to engage them and kiss, encourage them afterwards. And I think you all do a very, very good job at this. Lastly for this session, handling difficult members. Ephesians 4, 2. Let's read Ephesians. All together, let's go. Now, I want you to try a very, I call this a Lectio Divina uh, strategy. I want you to read this again, and this time read it as if you're conversing to somebody. Go. Now look to each other and say that again. Tumanim ba? Kasi kayo na pa kayo nagbabasa na parang, oh, you, know, you know, my desire po with the CCFers or you know, with our brethren is that we really take our reading of the Bible seriously. Sometimes po kasi napaka-mechanical, eh, mabasa lang. You know, uh, Pastor Edmund Chan really say, you know, there's really tone and tension to what's happening in the text. So there is a tone here and there's a tension. And I, I, I did that because there is really a tension and a tone happening here. What is the tone and the suggested tone that we approach others, including difficult members, with what? With all loneliness and gentleness. An intention dito? With what? Bearing in one another in love. Why is it a tension? Do we naturally do the three things below? No, we don't. By nature. Even in our default mode. We do not like long-suffering we don't like bearing, and we don't like loving people, especially, and this applies especially with those who disagree with us, the difficult members in your Friday and Saturday group. But what does it ask of you? With lowliness and gentleness, do suffer for them, bear with their weight, not physical, and love them. Encourage them, love and good deeds, encourage them with love and good deeds. So this is our mindset when we have difficult members on Friday and Saturday. You've done your part. You've done your facilitation role so well. You've cave KK'd, you draw out opinions, you're so prepared. But when times you are not prepared, this is the mindset. So you blundered and made the mistake with your statement. Ephesians 4.2 So somebody is playing the role of devil's advocate. Ephesians 4.2 not intentionally, but just because they, that's where they came from. I'm not saying they came from, <laughs> from, I don't know. What I'm saying is that they came from a background which totally opposes your view of Christ. 
or of salvation or of victorious living. So it happens that your members are all difficult on Friday and Saturday. That's possible. Okay. That's possible. What if they're all difficult? Do you what? Go to DM and complain? No. Ephesians 4 2. You suffer. You suffer. <laughs> you, you bear and you love, all right? You know, uh, long. Is it just suffering? No, it's long suffering. Friday and Saturday, naging one week. You know? No. Okay, what I'm just trying to say is that this is our response to times we are not prepared. You can do all the preparation work. You can do your role very well to the letter. You've gone through the questions. You've done your commentary research, kapa, just to be sure. But then this comes out. Ephesians 4 2. Things will never turn out the way you wanted to. Like in a military battle or a war operation, may mga mangyayaring in the expected, such as these. I said Ephesians 4 2, and I said, You mean that your seatmate? Because what again is our default? I don't like this guy. I know. I won't, I won't endure two days with this lady. She just draws out my old self. Wala na dapat yun. Okay, so, these difficult people, <clears throat> what do we do with them? This is a very crude, very generalistic approach, but based from our experiences, these are the kinds of people commonly encountered. And why do we know them? Because leaders tell, them about, tell us about it. Okay, so this is based on some informal research. There are hecklers, there are ramblers, there are know-it-alls, and there are term, no? conversationalists. Which is a great way of saying, machikas lang sila. First, okay, Ephesians 4 to humble yourself, do not label them as this. This is just for our purposes. Okay, do not have in your mindset, machika, rambler. Get out. Okay, so do not have that prejudging mindset. Okay, that's just... Okay, just, just judging people, that's wrong. So this is just for internal purposes so that we know how to address them. Don't focus on the left column. Focus on what to do with them. Be part of the solution. Okay, don't complain to DM and say, swap, swap group members. May ganon. Sila pwede siguro, pero kayong leaders, pwede. Okay, you're there, you volunteered for this great privilege, and you're going to own it. So don't go to DM and say, I want to swap tables. Or, de, wala palang tables, swap groups. What do we do? With people who are usually heckling, meaning they are there because they like it when there's chaos. No, what I'm saying is they like it when there's interesting exchanges, to be politically correct. What do you do with the heckler? Yung tipong may side comment na medyo sharp at medyo bending your spirituality, <clears throat> testing your waters and your patience and your godliness. What do we do? Read all together. Go. Okay, recognize the person and then redirect. Okay, so to see Judy, yung medyo rambler, or sorry, heckler. Thank you, Judy, for that comment. Although, talagas at the back of your mind, sana mag break na. So, anyway, um, <coughs> Leia, no? So, on topic, so Leia, so we were talking about so and so, so what do you think about this? Curious ako, what is your strategy for these kinds of people? Anyone? This is just a suggestion. We're not saying this is the end all solution. Anyone who has the same experience, siyempre, ayaw nyo ilaglag yung members nyo. No? So, but in case you do, are encountering these people, first again, love them and then recognize them, kiss them in that way, refocus them, yun yung kick. Medyo mapapansin nila, okay, I'm not the center of this conversation. And then, ask the group to respond. If necessary, ask your group to respond. Kung medyo out of time na kayo, you don't have to do the second part. But, to love him back, to kiss him again, just ask the group, so what is your response to his side comment, or no, side comment, to his opinion? To his opinion. Yung pala, malay nyo, pare-pareho pala silang may side comment na ganun. Opinions. Ramblers, the Maistoria people are people who like to talk about who? Themselves. Themselves. If the leader is the rambler, don't. If the member is the rambler, when there is a pause or break, what do we do? Thank him. And then again, refocus. 
Acknowledge a person and then refocus. Ang favorite nila illustration dito, pag huminga. Banat. Okay? Pag huminga, banat. Actually, this is just a product of the second statement. If you did establish your guidelines in the first place, this will be avoided. Because now they have this TikTok in their mind saying, okay, everybody has to share. We have certain so-and-so minutes. Sa D-groups, iba usually may mga timer pa nga. Although, medyo mechanical yun. Ten minutes lang ang sharing ng ating week. Ano? Kahit po na-promote ka, nagkasawa at nagbura ka in one week, ten minutes ka lang mag-share. Ha? So yun. <clears throat> but what I'm trying to say is that if we have established rules on the discussion time, this will be avoided. If it happens, pause. When they pause, and they will, they will certainly, unless scripted yung buong talambu, nag-testimony, you know, talambuhay nila, they will pause, use that as an entry point to respectfully refocus the discussion. Address them. Thank you, Jen. Michelle. And again, the kick here will, they, will be them realizing that, o oh nga pala, there is still Jen on the other side of the table, of the group. And I think naman, human beings as we are, we will acknowledge that. Wala namang Heckler na rambler pa. Okay. <laughs> know it all. Feeling genius. Or Betty say yes, shares. Character daw yun na maraming alam eh. Use him as a resource, but suggest that we generate ideas from others first. Now, I've heard a lot of leaders saying, Uy, yung D-group member na na-assign sa akin, for example, sa Sunday, I've heard this, seminary graduate. Thankfully, hindi nag-back out yung leader. Talk on the challenge and welcome the member. Kiss, kiss, kiss if necessary. Sorry, kiss, kiss, kiss. Tama. Okay, but he also applied the right re response. Use the person as a resource. Okay, the last thing you want to do is alienate the person and say, your knowledge has no value to this group. Everybody counts, remember. Even the person who thinks he has the absolute monopoly of the truth counts. So just tell him okay, that we will now, again, refocusing na naman to. Listen to other takes on the same subject matter. Use him as a resource. Ask him if he agrees or disagrees with the response. So what do you think about what she said, Mr. Re Mr. Mr. Resource? Mr. Know-it-all? <laughs> and they will help you. Tap their knowledge. Of course, Lord willing, this, this is aligned and correct knowledge. Okay? Tap it. Reasonably. Because we don't want them to be my story at the end of the day. Tap it. But on the other hand, this may help you because this might expose, again, adding to your purpose of opinion, this might expose where they're coming from. And a lot of times, because we have a lot of denominations who, who are indeed claiming that they are faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ, and they have different takes on different subject matters, it's in the details dun lumalabas ang mga disagreements and areas for correction and areas for pointing back. Usually naman, sa mga broad statements, we kind of agree. But when it comes to the details, that resource person will show. will show. Of course, we want them to be correct about things, but just be ready for that. So use him, tap into his wealth of knowledge. It's still about edifying the Lord anyways. But of course, limit him. A conversationalist is machika, not related to, not necessarily my story, machika lang siya. She likes changing topics. He likes... You know, distracted. Baka may, I don't know, ako, tingin ko, HDD ako eh. Mayroon kayong member na ganun, okay, who self-diagnosed HDD. Ask the ideas and share it to the group. Ask him for ideas that are what? Related to the topic. Usually, they will just change topics na, Uy, bowling tayo sa Bernes, sa Mamayang gabi, sa Mega Mall. Traffic po. Yes, let's go back to this. Anyway, um, focus on the ideas about the topic and ask him about the topic. Okay, Medyo he will also align naman to you. Again, I believe that the attendees on Friday and Saturday will realize your kick part. And let him share about the topic. And that way po, kung walang tubig, tapos na siya pag nauhaw na siya. <clears throat> okay, we'll end with this one. We'll have a five-minute break afterwards. Ten Beatitudes. Wow, so, sino nasulat ito? So, biblically aligned. Beatitudes for fasces. This one wala sa DNA. Wala rin to sa orientation. So this might be new for most of you. What are some B attitudes of CCF, small group or breakout facilitators which we want on display this Friday? Number one, be caring. Be on a shepherding mode. You are the facilitator. 
by some point you have authority, you are the shepherd of the group. You are the shepherd of the group. Do not be the one being shepherded. Yes, learn from them, and I'm certain you will learn something from them, but at the end of the day, you direct the discussion and you direct them to the truth. That is your shepherding role, your discipling role. You point them to the truth about Christ and application to their lives. Second, be a role model, walk your talk. I'm going to say some quotation. Your actions speak so loud, I cannot hear what you're saying. This is what we want to happen. How can this happen in an event full of words? Talking pastors, talking leaders, talking members. It's in those unguarded moments, it's even in how you say things. The tone of your voice, it actually manifests what kind of thing you're demonstrating in you. So let your actions Guarded or unguarded, break time or plenary or breakout time, speak so loud that they won't even bother digging into the words, although they should, but because your testimony to them is so effective and in, in, infectious. <laughs> nice one. Infectious that, you know, it just, it just clicks. And so is the person who is committed to Christ. So is the testimony of a person who is fully surrendered on Friday and Saturday. You serve them. You get their snacks for them in the line. You make yourself available. Walk your talk. It's easy to be all that in the 30 minutes and to be anti that after the 30 minutes. Because in the 30 minutes, you're so conscious and you're so structured and you're so planned out. But did you plan out for their personal issues after that? Did you plan out for their opposing views? Did you plan out for them saying, I want you to be my D group leader? Did you plan out for that? Maybe you hope to, but you didn't all the time plan for those things. So how do you respond? Walk your talk. Be flexible but remain focused. Be flexible but remain focused. And how do you do that in the context of these discussions? It's all about the work of the Spirit in you. Allow the Spirit to guide you. Yes, you have a structure and a flow. And yes, we praise God for the pastors and the materials providers who structured it this way. But in the moments and as the process goes and as you discuss, you give follow-up questions, you affirm, you kick, you affirm again. It's the Spirit clearly demonstrated in you. Actually, in every aspect of Friday and Saturday, we want the Spirit glorified, don't we? Don't we? Yes, it's not about our intentions. Be tactful. Be careful with the words and the tone of your voice. Again, demonstrating or being a model. Be careful with our word choices. I am assuming there are only a few seekers on Friday and Saturday. So, again, we're told during training, be mindful of our Christianese language. Not so that we hide ourselves, okay, but we reach out even more to them and then win them here. Okay? And tone of your voice. Again, that tone says a lot. Kaya nga po kanina, when you were reading Ephesians, you can't just read it like a mechanical bot. It's, it's speaking. So if you try to somehow apply that, just what you did to your partner a while back, I think you'll do fine. Mean what you say. Say what you mean. And have a genuine interest in what you're actually reading. And have that genuine interest manifest in your actions. Be tactful. Be careful with words. Number five, be confident in Christ. For those of you who are feeling ill-equipped, you've been a D-group leader for 38 years and all you want to say is that I'm not ready? I'm not good enough? It says in Philippians, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Context, please. What is happening in Philippians here? <clears throat> what is happening to Paul here? Is he jumping in joy? No. It is through the sufferings and the trials that the Lord makes you what you are. And he qualifies you for this. So be confident in one simple fact. He is your Lord and Savior. That's it. And because he is your Lord and Savior, part of his lordship is that you follow. And what is your act of following? You disciple. You make disciples. And did he say, I will leave you to your own as you make disciples? No, he says, lo, I will be with you. 
You can never be good enough in the eyes of man. That is a wrong take on this one. But look to the qualifier. It's not about your qualification. It's about who you know. And although in the government that is a corrupt kind of thinking, in the church, it's kind of true. It's all about who you know and the one you know. Be sensitive. Listen to nonverbal communications. We've discussed this a while ago. Encourage participation. Number seven, be pleasant. A gentleman and a gentle lady is one who makes sure that people around him or her are as comfortable as they are. Again, an act or flow of good works, a form of encouragement if you go back to Hebrews. So please be available and serve, 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 even if it's not your area of concern. Serve, serve, serve. Number eight, be prompt. Huh? <laughs> Why? All right, be prompt. What time does the program begin? We'll discover that in session two, but it's officially eight o'clock registration. But the program, nine. So when should you arrive? 7.30. Mag, mag, mag divo ka muna, sir. Okay, great. And yeah, you, you can never be too prepared for this one. So yeah, go 7.30. Avoid the traffic. I must mind you, for coming from someone in Marikina, the traffic in that road going there is really something. <laughs> Six o'clock, sir, may pila na. Okay, so again, part of your preparation, know your, know your venue, and your venue is, is in a bustling highway location. All right, be prompt. Even after lunch break, Bahama Mama, you're so into each other, nag lunch break kayo sa Burger King. The cafeteria will be open, by the way. So, Burger King kayo nag lunch. What time does lunch, what, on day one, what time does lunch end? Two. It will automatically begin at 2 o'clock. So how many minutes do you have? 60. You have one hour for lunch. Our suggestion is, and we will make sure we have chairs, is that you eat na lang here. Uh, I'm not sure if you can eat inside the MPH, but maybe to preserve the cleanliness there, we will put some chairs here in the CAF and maybe the social hall for that. Be purposeful. Be clear with your objectives. Okay, part of your preparation, setting guidelines and all that. Be prayerful. Your best offense and defense. Love this. Love this ending. Be prayerful. Is your best offense and best def defense. Call unto the Lord, call unto the Lord, and let the Spirit guide you. That ends uh, part one, a review of CCF DNA and how to facilitate.